Yes, the random number generator. It's capable of creating enormous profits or destroying an entire player base. We'll have to destroy it. Do you really think we can destroy it? Well, no. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Wilbit, and week two of Cornwood Ascending has just snuck up on us. What? What's going on, Prof? Omens Lair lies this way, but if we take the direct path, we're all but certain to encounter the tunneling horror. Huh? The what? I'm the Great Wizard Greyfarn. I fear no horror. As long as it doesn't tunnel, of course. This horror you speak of tunnels are better off. Tunneling creeps the hell out of me. <laughs> Wait, what was that word you said before? <laughs> Alright, learn about the tunneling horror, which I believe was... I believe they mistook Zoidberg for that, is how the movie went. What? I'm not the tunneling horror. I hate that guy. Yes. Quiet Professor you. can do something for an hour. Hermes. Mm. Limbo down the street, mon. Learn about the tunneling horror. Momon's guards are coming from the swamp. Take them down to collect blue dice and embark on adventures. So we're going to need different colored dice. I bet that will continue from week to week. To unlock more Cornwood outfits, complete the adventure and take down the tunneling horror. So this is going to work very similar to pre to the last week in most ways. We still have our red morks if you need green dice to get essence, which is good because the way those work seems to be changing around. In the original version, post-event, all of the essence characters were going to change into just regular badge characters. So if you had anybody at a high level who you hadn't leveled up yet, you were going to be able to use badges to change them. Uh, it turns out they are going to be keeping their essences permanently, so if you don't collect 100 essences before the end of the event, you won't be able to level them until the next time they show up, with the exception of premium characters. So I'm showing Sir Calculon here, but he would actually be the exception to that. Apparently those are going to convert into badge characters. That's very confusing, but that's the way it works. If you haven't gotten enough essence for Titanius Anglesmith or Gynecaladriel or any of this week's characters, they're going to be kind of locked at their current rank until a future time. So even if you can't, and I realize it's a really tall order to get that much money or that much career chips, especially if you're playing free to play, but you will be able to get all of the, I can't show up because I already have them promoted, but you can get and keep the essence. So if you want to potentially turn those guys into a cheap grind team, it's a lot easier to get those essences than it is to get the career chips. So that might be a pretty good strategy for guys. But let's check out this week's stuff. Is it over here in the featured tab? Yes siree. This week we're going to be unlocking the Great Wizard Grey Farn, Herm Aphrodite, looking lovely, Shklees looking very lovely, and then our premium is Waltazar. That's right, the boss and mom's son, and for our current purposes, he technically counts as a character. I don't know if that's going to remain true going forward. I don't know if in the future that once Walt comes out as a character, if this will be converted into a costume and just put up that way. This is the first time that we've gotten a costume before a character has come out in any way. Presumably it'll work the same way for the other two brothers and probably Mom or Maman if we're gonna end up getting her. Speculate all you like! I'm not really sure how it's gonna go. It's different. It's new. It's the first time we've encountered this. I'd rather him retroactively become a costume, personally, but technically if they became two different characters that would be more useful because we could have them do different things at the same time. Let's look at their passives. Uh, the Great Wizard Grey Farm is still a scientist, and he's a little bit interesting in that his uh, passive actually builds up twice as slow. His special attack fills up 100% slower, um, and he's a huge glass cannon with 60% reduced defense and 40% increased attack. Um, his special attack 
as a result has a 70% chance to cause burn for three turns across everybody. So you're not going to get to use this special very often, maybe once per like full run, but when it comes out it is going to nuke everybody with a really powerful dot because that burn's going to cause 10% damage every time they go to take a turn. And 70% is crazy high! Frozen in time, his basic attack can also freeze the target for two turns. He's a mage. Fire and ice. Cool. I kind of like him. Um, the slow special isn't ideal, but he's an interesting looking scientist, and I like scientists. Hey, hey. Hermaphrodite has, um, a delivery boy, Shkli's kind of, um, middling. They have a 50% chance to cause bleed for a turn with their special attack, um, which is nice, but it's only on their special for one character. They have a 30% chance to confuse that single target for two turns on a basic attack, and when their- and when their HP is below 40%, Hermaphrodite has a 40% chance to dodge basic attacks. So, a little hard-lived, a little heavy-hitting, but at this point, that's every delivery boy. Uh, Shkli's fine, but there's not really anything that, like, crazy going on with him, her. Um, fine, if you like, I mean, uh, Hermaphrodite is a really cool centaur, uh, definitely a cool-looking skin, so a good reason to use it, especially once Legola comes out and you can have, like, horse team. And then Waltazar, our premium, uh, how good he is is kind of going to depend on how good his brothers are, because uh, two of his abilities depend on even either having Larius or Ignis in the crew. But if they're both there, he has a 100% to double attack and a 50% chance to poison a target for two turns, both on his basic attack which is a pretty crazy villain, to be honest. His special attack gives him 20% lifesteal. That's not bad. Um, that alone doesn't make him that great. It's really going to come down to, are they going to be a cool team together? And we aren't going to know that until we get stats on the other two guys. I'm going to go ahead and pick him up while we wait on the other guys to come in, because based on Sir Calculon having been useful, I want to see if Waltazar is going to be as well. Waltazar. I pledge my loyalty to the great Maman. <laughs> Do we get a quest? Walt? There we go. Now could you let those little idiots defeat you, idiot? Wow, Maman is, um... I was expecting her to be a full dragon, but I guess she starts in her kind of Medusa Dracula outfit. I didn't anticipate being attacked. I was out getting you your royal sandwich. And you managed to mess that up! There's nothing royal about olive loaf! Alright, Waltazar is gonna get his standard solo tasks, which seems to be the thing that characters do now. They get, just go off and do your own thing. And we're gonna completely ignore those, while we move on with the actual proper quests. Is it really necessary to go marching past the tunneling horror like this? So long as Momon threatens Cornwood, we must reach her as soon as possible. But I'm scared of the tunneling horror. Why can't we march past the snuggling delight instead, like I originally suggested? Quiet! Don't say that name! The snuggling delight gives me the heebie-jeebies. Wow, growing up in an orphanage really did a number on you. Presumably, the horse orphanage. The horse finage. You fools will never defeat me, for I possess a horrific ancient power! And I intend to unleash it on all of Cornwood, until every last one of you bows to my will. Understood. Give me a couple minutes to speak to every last one of us, and see what I can do. Uh, okay, clear the guards, collect three blue dice, and complete the, the map. This time, like a clever boy, I know... Where are they? Do they get icons? Hello? Oh, you click on them! You no longer need fighters, you're gonna have to find and click upon them. That is, um, I like having the icons, because, in case you haven't noticed, my town's still kind of a mess. But, okay. They're gone, I didn't have to fight them. And, by doing that first, we check off the collect three dice. If you collect one or two, then run a mission, and then come back, you're gonna have to wait for the respawns on this one, which is not ideal. Let's check out the maps! Here on Earth, we've got Leave It to Chance, and Waltazar's Revenge, as I had hoped, has some maps for much higher level characters. So they definitely are assuming that you're gonna be running along a high level kind of pay to play progression path, as there's already a 41 Titanius Anglesmith gate on the first of these maps. 
let's just run this. And do we have a required? We do not. But they do recommend bringing our big bads. Let's bring both of them. Oh no. Oh yeah, I can't bring both versions of Amy. A doy. That's a surprisingly easy thing to forget. So, yeah, you probably don't need to bring both of them like I have just done. And interestingly, oh no, they do have, there's a single blue gate. Or a single purple one. So you are going to get things faster if you're able to handle the hardest possible paths again. We'll check out. I'm kind of glad that I brought Gynecaladriel just because I'm curious about her charms. I know there was a lot of speculation going on about how good of a charm she was going to have. And granted, this may be over so fast that I actually won't get to use her special in this particular fight. Um, but she has a 30% chance to charm an entire party, which I'm pretty sure if it works like other characters, that's not everybody at 30%. It's just a 30% per character. So she'll probably get some of them. But usually not all of them. Mission over. But with my big hitting guys, I don't think she's going to get even a single charge off. We haven't been hit yet. Pretty middling responses from these lower level maps. I'm going to, I got to be honest. You have no choice but to bow to me. I will conquer all of Cornwall with this ancient power. Hang on. Well, what exactly is this ancient power? Fool, you think to trick me into revealing my secrets? I learned my lesson when I gave a Cornwood Baker my pie recipe and turned it into a million dollar franchise. Welcome to, to Medieval Shark Tank. We were just attacked by another band of morks. You did this, Mamon. Yes, I did. Let's see, you knew I had an army of morks. You knew I wanted to get rid of you. Which part of this didn't you expect? I guess I just failed to connect the dots in time. Alright. So basically, this week is going to just progress almost exactly like last week. Oh yeah, because the costumes are even in here. It's going to cost 20 of the Grey Farm Essence to get Great Wizard Grey Farm. And 30 to get Hermaphrodite. A slight escalation, but to be honest, this is going to go pretty quick. Um... And that's going to be basically it for the week. Uh, it looks like this is again, other than the fact that the levels are starting to get a little bit high on the optional paths, I think this is another pretty easy week. You're going to just like bring your one extra character and collect your essences. I like this. I think this is fun. I'm having a good time. You shall never defeat my thousands of warrior morks. <laughs> I beg to differ. Under my brilliant leadership, my beloved brothers in arms shall easily vanquish your more cords. Oh, really? Do you understand that I'm willing to sacrifice every last one of my men to defeat you? That makes two of us. Ooh, ooh, them fighting words. Great wizard, great fun. Uh, Mama found some crazy ancient powers that she's using to conquer the people of Cornwood. Ancient power, eh? Those are much harder to beat than regular, brand new powers. But you're an ancient wizard. I would have thought beating ancient powers is right up your alley. Are you kidding? I can't even remember how to zip up my robe. Doesn't have a zipper. So, um, that's a thing. Uh, so they basically want you to just grind the easier of those maps and then unlock Grey Farm, the wizard. But I did discover, I didn't actually realize, that you can actually craft the blue die out of your leftover green die. So it is worth still fighting the previous morks. Um, I have 85 dice, so, um, we're just gonna make some dice every now and then so that we can keep running some things. That should let us push everything out pretty quickly. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is this, is this week... Is this kind of a fun event? Is it going to be a little bit boring because it's too easy? A thing that I think you should be very careful about wishing for? Or is this exactly what we've needed is a nice casual month long with some relatively easy to pick up kinda neat characters? Um, Waltazar might be a little pricey not knowing what he's going to be useful for, but he's still going to be around for the next couple of weeks. So we can wait and see what his bros are like before investing in him. 
um, and still have access to his essence getting secondary map pretty soon. I think he's actually going to make getting these two guys up and leveled a breeze. Um, especially if you feel like using Greyfarn, uh, having a scientist who you can easily get to 61 is pretty appealing if you are a free-to-play player because that, that AoE is going to be handy forever. I don't like him as much as I do regular Professor or even Amy or some of the other scientists, but if you have been struggling to level one up, he's a good choice. He hits hard, he does cool AoE, he has a stun that doesn't break charm. There's a lot of really good stuff going on there, and I think he's this week's highlight, and he's pretty easy to pick up from what I can tell. I haven't gone through the maps, and I actually don't have time to do it right now on camera, but I'm going to level these guys up and check them out. Let me know what you guys think. Is there something I'm missing because I'm trying to rush through this a little bit? Let me know. Uh, sound off in the comments, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.